What's up? Morning. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. You've been busy lately. You've been very busy as well. I have. Sucks. We've been traveling everywhere. You have too. Yeah? Yeah. You're like one trip shy of my trips. That's about it. You'll catch up pretty soon. Yeah. I'm sure. Because I'll try to bail out. (laughs) <laughs> That's times. what he does. He's like, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. And then I'll show up. Anyway, welcome to number 23. Number 23. Um, hope you enjoy the simulators episode. Hope you're enjoying the, uh, uh, how do you call that, the quick tips series. And hope you enjoy the last episode of uh, Learning 3D, um, which was, I think, a pretty decent series. Yeah, it was a and, great series. You know, some people that. ask what happened with Learning 3D. Well, it's, it, Learning 3D as a series is done in the sense that a figure that we've taught all the logical progression of how things need to be learned. That doesn't mean we're not going to do any more learning 3D episodes, but we're going to do them. They're not going to follow any particular sequence. We're just yeah. going to have like, we're, we we'll have to come up with a series name, yeah. but we'll throw stuff up there. We'll throw stuff and up. it'll range from, I don't know, something really basic, some topic that's really basic to a topic that is really complicated, yeah, but all about the flying, showing the stick movements and giving you tips on how to learn this stuff. It'll but anyway, then we have we have uh, the quick tips as well. If you guys haven't been watching, we've done flat bar, flat bar list like a year or two ago. And then yeah. we did the Goblin, and then the Gowie X7. And coming up this month, we have the Synergy uh, E6, E7. So yep. keep an eye on those. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah yep, about. yep. And uh, so for 23, what we're going to do today is we're going to do something kind of different, like different style. We're exactly. going to kind of do like a top 10 deal. We're top? Top 10. 10 troubleshooting troubleshooting tips, tips for yeah. teeth top so 10 trouble, say that 10 times fast top 10 troubleshooting tips top 10 tr- i can't say <laughs> but anyway bobby and i have gotten to get together and we kind of thought about the most important and i'm sure we're missing a few because it's practically impossible to think about all the problems that you guys might have with your machines yep but the top 10 most common issues that people run into exactly anywhere from like engine issues to tail issues to whatever so what we're going to do is we're going to start with number 10 and work our way down to number one. Oh, I'm excited. And I don't think that there are any, I think we're actually, we, like, the way it should be done is in, like, the level of import, of difficulty level of, of figuring out. Yeah, that's You know good. what I mean? We the just easiest came up with this, one the to way. figure out, yeah, yeah. and then that's number one will be, like, yeah. the hardest one to figure out. So, yeah, that'll be good. So that's what we're going to do because we just discussed it. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and we'll get it done. Yeah, exactly. All right, roll it. Roll it. Intro. Roll it! <laughs> And starting off our big top 10 countdown is number 10. My motor is running lean. What the heck? So, I've got my Synergy N5C here. Flying here, beautiful morning in Orlando. So let's say I'm going up and I'm flying. And my helicopter is flying great. Not running lean, good smoke trail, you can hear it. I'll start tick-tocking, and then my engine suddenly starts going lean. Hear it? Oh, it's crackling and ugh. Eh, 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 eh. So my engine went lean. What are we gonna do? Let's go to the bench and we'll troubleshoot it. 
So the engine went lean. What are we gonna do? Well, there's a few things that we're gonna take a look at. Number one, I just popped my pressure line for that just to show that when your pressure line comes loose on a motor that has a uh, regulator, such as any, any YS engine, such as these OS engines with the pump, um, you need crankcase pressure. Sorry, with the regulator, I apologize. Um, you need pressure, so this comes from your back plate to here. So I popped that line and made the engine go lean for the video, wonderful. So check that, number one, that could happen. Um, number two, check to make sure that your tank has pressure in there. If, you know, when I come down, whenever I'm done with a flight and I release this, it should go pssss. You know, it should pop a little bit. If your tank has a hole in it somewhere, maybe along the seam, um, you're, you're going to have a bad time. The motor's going to lean out. Okay? Third thing we're going to check is the fuel filter. So if I take a look at the filter here, um, you, can, you can take a look. We'll, we'll unscrew it here for you. So I pulled off the filter, and I'm going to check the filter. So it's good. Unfortunately, I'm using an aligned filter. That's all I have. And uh, yeah, it works. So you're going to pull this out. You're going to check for any sort of crap or particles in there. You can squirt it out if you have a um, uh, uh, rubbing alcohol squirt bottle. You can squirt that out. But for the most part, the filter seems pretty good. So that's one thing that we were going to look at. Third thing we're going to take a look, or fourth thing we're going to take a look at is the fuel line. You want to inspect the fuel line and make sure that there's no visible leaks. Uh, any holes in there, any big gashes. A lot of times, uh, this model is laid out nicely, but sometimes the fuel line has to run through frames and around sharp objects, and when that happens, they can chafe and wear away. So make sure your uh, make sure your fuel lines are all set and good to go. Another thing that could cause your engine to run lean is uh, improper sealing on your muffler. So on here on the muffler, I just use RTV, just a very 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 thin amount of RTV. I believe we showed that in episode one. First ep episode one, RTV I use, you can use a gasket, um, you can use a, oh, there goes the canopy. You can use epoxy, you can use pretty much anything on the muffler. Um, a muff uh, the nipple can come loose on the muffler, so you can also um, RTV that, um, you can glue that, you can epoxy that, you can do anything on there. Another thing to consider is your needles. Are your needles screwed in all the way? Did your kid go up to it and crank your needles in all the way? Check your needles. Your regulator can go bad. Um, your regulator can fail and whatnot. Your carburetor can fail. Um, you know, that's pretty much a last ditch resort. If your motor's going lean, take a look at those tips. That should mostly cause it. If you can't swap carburetors with someone, and if, if all else fails, your motor's just baked, get a new one. And another thing that we want to take a look at, probably one of the most important things, is our fuel line inside the tank. Um, here I've got a fuel magnet which is a sponge which uh, soaks up all the fuel and, and it's used instead of a clunk. But they're, they're known to deteriorate so they can go into the filter so take a look at that. But um, if you can't figure it out, pop your tank out, take a look at your clunk line. Sometimes where they bend uh, right where the fuel line goes over the um, little nipple there, um, it can get a hole in it. So if that's got a hole in it, um, the best way to tell if your fuel line's broken inside, fill up your tank for full and run it and if it's good you're okay and then if it goes down uh, maybe a minute later it's going lean maybe half tank where the fuel's sloshing around that's how you know your fuel line is uh, has a hole in it so that was number 10 my engine runs lean let's move on to number nine number nine my helicopter shakes Sorry, we don't have enough bent items on the helicopter at the moment to show you how it looks, but I'm pretty sure you've all seen it. It just looks, <laughs> looks like a jackhammer, and that's bad. So if you're seeing it, the best place to look is your canopy. Your canopy is a telltale sign of if something's shaking. Um, you know, your skids will kind of show it too, so take a look there. So first thing to check always 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 main shaft um, Bert and I travel a lot sometimes they'll get bumped in the case uh, sometimes you'll it'll fall over while you're going to the car or whatever so a lot of people recommend rolling on uh, rolling the main shaft on a piece of glass or something well that's just too cumbersome for me so here's what you do you ready for this one pop your head off pop the anti-rotation off if you've got one uh, pop your swash plate off so just have your main shaft sticking out besides here start your helicopter up and spool it up 
and just watch. Just watch the top of it. Just hold it back here. Make sure the tail blades aren't going to hit anyone or any get small children or anything. You can get rid of the small. You can get rid of the tail blades if you want. Doesn't matter. Start it up. Just slowly rev it up, and you'll see it. If it's out, it's going to look out. Because it's, it's too hard to look at the head and whatnot. So that's how we recommend taking a look at main shaft. If it's bent, don't be cheap. Just freaking get a new one and your problems will go away. Uh, a so you want to take a look at all your moving shafts. The spindle, if a bent spindle really won't show that. We'll talk about later what a bent spindle shows. But it's really not going to show a shake. Um, another thing to look at is your starter shaft. If you smoke it in real hard, your starter shaft, which is going up and down, engaging into your clutch down here, that can get tweaked and that can make it shake. So take a look at your starter shaft. Um, tail output shaft, a bent tail output shaft will make your tail shake um, up and down. It won't really make it go side to side, it'll make a vibration up and down. So just check out your shafts. Um, another reason for a shake, your blades could be out of balance. Um, all these rotor blades that we're flying and you know the, the good top notch blades, you know, eighty to hundred dollars and beyond, they're all they're always balanced, they're always a match set. But hey, you could get an out one or if you're flying woodies or something, then you gotta get a blade balancer and a scale to check that. Um, so that's pretty much it. So my helicopter shakes. Just take a look at everything there. Um, one thing that could add to it, maybe a torque tube. Maybe. I've seen it shake a little bit. Just any moving part, anything that spins hard. Your main gear could be out of balance. You know, just anything that's big and that spins or really fast. You, you see what we're saying? Just spinning stuff. So take a look at that. So my helicopter shakes. Fix it. Number eight. All right, one thing that I see a lot of people run into every once in a while is a little bit of a head wobble. Um, basically what the helicopter will do is it'll actually um, look like it's rocking back and forth. And a lot of people get that confused with vibration. Don't get fooled by it. You know, like Bobby explained earlier, vibration actually, it's more of a drastic shake. It's a quicker, higher frequency shake. Um, when you see this up and down tail sort of motion, uh, that, that's what we call a wobble or a bobble or whatever. And that usually happens for a lot of reasons. I'm trying to get it to this helicopter to do it and it's actually not cooperating much but basically it looks something like this it's a very fast like back and forth elevator motion like that um, that what what's causing that is uh, there's a lot of factors that cause that but basically the main reason is the the amount of dampening on the head if the head dampening is too tight depending on the type of helicopter you will see that at low head speeds um, how to fix it? Eh, there's many different ways to fix it. You can soften your dampening. For example, back in the T-Rex days, um, I remember t uh, a line used to make different types of dampeners, softer and harder. The harder the dampener, the higher the head speed you had to run to avoid this up and down tail wobble. Um, so if you went with a very soft dampener, for example, you could run a lower head speed. But then keep in mind, if you run a soft dampener, then you might have some boom strike, potentially boom strike issues if you're flying really hard 3D. So you have to kind of choose whether you want to fly the lower head speed and run the, low, the soft dampeners or run the high head speed with the hard dampeners. Others, other helicopters manifest this in, in other ways. For example, on this velocity, you know, if you find a head speed where the, the oscillation begins, you'll usually see it in the whole helicopter. Like here you'll see the landing gear. Let's see if it, if it does it. There it is. It's very hard to see because it's not very pronounced, but you can see how the, the landing gear is kind of shaking a little bit. Now, as you can see, you know, if, if you actually had a real vibration, a true vibration, the landing gear wouldn't do that. It would be much quicker. It would be higher frequency. This is kind of a slow, relatively slow rocking effect on the landing gear. To get rid of this, all I do is what? Bump my, uh, my head speed up. Problem goes away. So, um, I guess that covers it. So that's it for tail up and down sort of bobble. And that's how you fix it. Increase your head speed or soften your dampening and don't sweat it. It's, there's nothing wrong with the helicopter. It's just the nature of the helicopter. Some of them do it worse than others. I know that, for example, T-Rex, back to T-Rex 600, original T-Rex 600 Nitro, did it a lot if the dampeners were tight, if you had the metal blade grips and you were running a low head speed. So at that point, just bump up your head speed and I guarantee it'll go away. So we'll move on to number seven. And number seven, uh, the dreaded 
fly barless drift. So basically you take your helicopter, and I apologize in advance, I have a couple of small issues with this machine right here. <laughs> but um, broken in transportation, I would assume, I hope. But anyway, so disregard any weird noises you hear. But anyway, say you take your nitro helicopter, you put it in a hover, and all of a sudden, and everything's kind of okay, and all of a sudden you go to idle up, and the helicopter just like, uh, very drastically kind of wants to like drift. And you have like, you feel like you have to constantly correct to bring it back into like a, a stable hover. And it's just, it's just drifting. Like every time you go to idle up, it wants to drift. And then you go back to normal and it kind of stabilizes. I've seen that a lot. That happens a lot. Um, and people just don't know what to make of it. It is flabberless system drift. It's induced by a high frequency vibration present in your helicopter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this machine back and show you a couple of things here real quick. Um, there's... The bottom line is generally when you have that problem, um, you can kind of mask the problem by playing with tape. I don't recommend it because there's an underlying cause for the problem. But make sure your tape is actually um, right. If you run too soft of a tape, um, the helicopter will drift, yeah. no doubt about it. Because the, the, the flabberless, the sensor, is going to sense the high freq frequency vibration and it's just basically going to induce a drift on the helicopter because it doesn't know the difference between stable hover and, and, and moving around or whatever. Um, so if the tape is too soft, it'll cause that problem. If the tape is too hard, sometimes it'll cause that problem. Again, it'll happen only if you have a high frequency vibration. Where can that high frequency vibration come from? It can come from a lot of different places. Um, like Bobby explained to you when you know you have a vibration and he was telling you to check the main shaft, that is a more visible vibration. That is what we call sort of a medium sort of frequency vibration. Flabberless system drift occurs with high frequency vibration. Unfortunately, high frequency vibration is not visible to the naked eye. I can't just look at the helicopter and, and confirm that I have a vibration. But it could be something that is just very ever so slightly out of whack. Like Bobby was explaining, maybe your, uh, your starter shaft is a little bit out and it's only a few thousands of an inch, but you don't see it, but that is just enough to drive the flabberless control system crazy. It could be that, it could be your motor. You know, I've seen people crash their helicopters really hard, especially if you have a nitro and they bend their motor crank. And when the crank is bent, you might not see it just by flying around because again, it's a very high frequency sort of vibration, but your flabberless system will see it and it will complain about it. Some flabberless systems are more resilient than others. For example, the Futaba CGY, CGY 750 is very, very resilient to, uh, to vibration. So you might never even have a problem. Um, the new V-Bar Blue Line is pretty resilient too. But for example, like the 3G system, especially the original 3G and not the 3GX, as well as the, um, say for example, the old V-Bar, the, the one that had the black sensors, they're very susceptible to vibration. So yes, you can mask it, like I said, change your tape settings, maybe a little bit looser tape if it's too tight, a little bit tighter tape if it's moving around too much and it's too loose. But the bottom line is you gotta go through your helicopter and find the cause of the problem. If it's nitro, check your engine crank, uh, check, your, check your starter shaft. You know, if it's electric, you know, it could be anything. It could be your torque tube out of whack. It could be issues with your gears. Believe it or not, gear mesh, even a poor gear mesh can cause issues on some helicopters. I mean, anything that rotates, just make sure everything's smooth and running well. Um, another way to verify that it is a sensor vibration induced problem is move the sensor somewhere else. Like for example, on this Velocity 90, my way to troubleshoot it, first thing I would do is I would move the sensor from like here to here. And that way I'm moving it away from any source of vibration that is more pronounced in this area. If it gets better, then I know for a fact it's vibration. If it doesn't get any better, then of course at that point I'm looking at the actual sensor itself. You might have a defective sensor. Sensors are known to go bad from one day to the next. So that's it for uh, flabberless system drift. And we're going to the next one. So now it's time for number six. Hooray! We're gonna talk about pitchiness. So Bert has loaned me his gobbler with his radio and everything. So I'm gonna show you pitchiness. Um, this model at the moment, um, because of the blades mainly, shows pitchiness uh, more than others. So we're gonna show it on this one. So on this one here, this is his uh, 770 gobbler. 
And these are the SAB blades, or 770 blades. And apparently they sent him flybard blades because that's all they had. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by pitchy. So we're just gonna go in forward flight. And in forward flight, it kind of wants to kind of porpoise like that. When I give a very small elevator movement, hands off, it's okay, but really small elevator, you can see it like climbing and stuff. Uh, that's what we call pitchy. That's what Bert and I call pitchy. You know, if, if we were to put it into a hurricane, uh, you know, it, it can kind of like wobble and it doesn't really feel locked in, you know, so, so that's what we call pitchy. We'll land it. All right. Why is the helicopter pitchy? Number one, blades. Um, once again, these are flybard blades. Flybard blades, um, as we discussed in episode 10 going flybarless, flybard blades have a span Y CG that's in closer to the main shaft. Because of a flybar, you have stability and you don't need your CG way out here. But these blades probably have a span Y CG probably somewhere in here. Um, for proper flybarless blades, we'd like to see them out here a little bit more. So number one, blades. Blades will do it. Uh, number two for checking your uh, pitchiness uh, is balance. Um, I've seen helicopters that are very tail heavy. When they're tail heavy, it'll always want to do this sort of porpoising action. So to check balance, a lot of people have different ways. I prefer picking it up right by the blade bolts and letting it hang, just like this. And we want to see if the boom's parallel to the ground. And as you can see, this model balances perfectly. I've seen people check the balance like this, but this is dumb because, for instance, this one has a tight drivetrain, tight torque tube and stuff, and it doesn't really... Tail belt. Yeah, sorry, the, the, the tail belt's uh, tight. On some models, it can be a tight torque tube, and if it's a little bit, let's say, for instance, if it's a little bit tail heavy, right? Yeah, it's just going to drop and it's going to fall. Oh, it's tail heavy. No. Let's pick it up this way. Pick it up right by the blade bolts and just check. So tail heaviness could be one. Another one could be it's a little bit less common, but if, if you still can't figure out your pitchiness with a fly bar list system, it should be hands off. When you give slow elevator movements up and down, it should be a nice controlled up and down. It shouldn't do this pitchiness like this model. So another thing you could take a look at is your thrust bearings, and especially the shims you have in between the uh, radial bearings and the thrust bearings. You could have them mixed up. I remember when we prototyped the whiplash, I goofed and I had the wrong shims in there when I built it and it was just wobbly and pitchy and stuff so triple check that make sure your thrust bearings um, aren't completely dead make sure your radial bearings aren't completely dead that'll do it um, and then lastly if you guys are still flying fly bars out there it's okay you'll catch up with the fly bar list stuff one day we don't hate you for it uh, paddles paddles could do it and fly bar length um, if your paddles are very light and aggressive yeah it'll want to do this pitchiness if they're big and heavy yeah it'll slow your model down but it'll make it nice and smooth for the pitch so that fixes number six. My helicopter is pitchy. So now we're going to move on to number five. Number five, we're going to talk very briefly about lockouts. Um, both Spectrum and Futaba have them, but Spectrum seemed to have them a little bit more common simply because the original DSM and DSM-2 is susceptible to ESD. So you got to make sure that you what don't... What does that mean? ESD means electrostatic discharge. So if you guys are, if for all of you guys that live in the northern or southern hemispheres in the cold area in the winter, you know, when you go like open your car door or whatever and you touch the door handle and it shocks you, that's pretty much electrostatic discharge. There's basically no current on this type of electricity, but there's a lot of voltage, like thousands and thousands of volts. What happens is if the spectrum uh, receiver gets this sort of discharge um, in the form of VSD, it'll actually freak out. It'll lock out momentarily. It might even shut off and turn back on. There's a lot of different things that can cause that. One solution, get the brand new DSMX. The SMX receivers are not susceptible to ESD. They work flawlessly. They're very nice. They're awesome. Now, there's also other issues that can cause lockouts. For example, if you're a V-Bar owner, and I know there's a lot of V-Bar owners over there, um, if you're using a V-Bar and you're using Spectrum and you're plugging in your satellite antennas to the V-Bar and you have some sort of lockout where you lose control of the helicopter and you get the helicopter back, check all your wires. Make sure that nothing is being shaved. This is not very clean, but it's. I'm, I know for a fact there's nothing here that's being 
chafed by a carbon frame or a piece of or aluminum uh, part of the helicopter you know if you have a wire that is chafed and is rubbing up against carbon that will actually confuse your v-bar or your spectrum receiver and you will have lockouts you'll momentarily lose control you might just feel like a loss of cyclic or or a sudden jerk in the helicopter that you did not do with your sticks so make sure all the all the wires in the helicopter are clean there's no shafe wires there's nothing rubbing nothing funny like i run people make fun of me i run like scotch tape and stuff like that just to make sure my wire is routed through the servo and is clean and it's not going to run into anything so make sure all that is taken care of another thing that can cause lockouts especially with the v-bar and i've seen this before many times um, if you have a castle speed controller they're supposed to be opto isolated but the original version of castle ice not the ice 2 the original version of castle ice it's known to sometimes make the v-bar go crazy somehow there's something that's back feeding through the v-bar and i've had helicopters where i'm flying around and all of a sudden the, the whole helicopter shakes as if somebody else is cracking my sticks and I'm not doing anything and I've troubleshooted everything I've checked my satellite receivers I've checked my v-bar and my log and I see all these errors there's no wires chafed there's nothing going on but it's still doing that and guess what it was it was the the speed controller that was the last thing I would have ever checked so keep that in mind how do you prevent ESD simple ESD usually occurs on a helicopter that's driven by a, a tail, tail belt driven tail usually does not occur on talk torque tube helicopters. If you have a uh, belt driven helicopter like the Goblin or like the T-Rex 500, original 500 or the T-Rex 600 or any of those helicopters that have tail belts, just what you can do to prevent or to avoid ESD is you can ground it. And how do you, how do you run a ground wire? Well, on the Goblin it's harder to do because it's carbon fiber and as you can see I don't have anything I don't have a ground on this helicopter, but again, I have DSMX antennas. If I was running DSM2, I probably would just take a very small self-tapping screw. I would put it in here. I would run a very thin piece of wire from here to to um, any anything that's connecting to the helicopter, like here. And then I would go to the front of the boom, and I would just run another small screw, maybe hide it like under the boom, like right here. And then I would take that wire from that screw and I would dump it into the negative of my battery. Some people dump it into the, uh, one of the motor mounts. So the, the whole goal here is, is that if there's any kind of ESD, electrostatic um, uh, electricity going flowing through the helicopter, it'll dump straight into your battery and it will never reach your receiver or your V-bar or whatever means of receiving the signal uh, you have on your model installed. Again, DSMX is not susceptible, so if you have DSMX, you're good to go. And as far as I know, Futaba doesn't seem to be susceptible to that so, so that's it and we're gonna go ahead and move on to number four and number four guys this is something that I actually was approached by a, a guy last weekend at the Birmingham Fun Fly asking me what it's costing this oh well, let me show you first you might see it well on the camera you might not I hope you do this is my 50 velocity n2 um, it's doing it a little bit. Most of the nitros I've ever owned always kind of do it. Let's see if you can see it. I'm gonna see if you can see the tail, if Bobby can zoom into that tail. As you can see, the tail is not very smooth. It's got a little bit of a, I wouldn't call, call it a shake. I, I guess it's a shake. It's really, it's not a hunting. It's just like a little left and right motion, but it happens very fast. It's not totally rock solid, planted, right? Um, Basically, what you're looking for here is the problem is, is that the tail is just, it's got this little tiny little thing and it's just, if you stare at it, you know, it's really moving like a quarter of an inch. It's not, it's not a very fast wag or anything like that. It's very little. Well, first of all, of course, the first thing you want to look at is your gain. Um, you know, if your gain's too high, of course, you guys know it's going to do it. Um, if your gain is right and, you know, you still have that, to be honest with you, all helicopters do it. Some are smoother than others. Um, I've had, you know, throughout the years, flying miniature aircraft, flying a line, and now flying Outrage and SAB. You know, I've had helicopters that do it very pronounced. I've had helicopters that are extremely smooth and don't do it. What is costing this? There's a lot of things that can cost this. You naturally have a lot of slop in your system over time. I don't care what helicopter you have. You could have a TDR, state-of-the-art 
$3,000, $5,000 machine, you're going to develop slop over time. So, you know, anything that you have for slop, anywhere from your blade grip to your pitch slider, down into your bowlings that drive the, uh, the tail arm, down to the front and to your bell crank and into your servo, you're going to have slop naturally in the system. That slop can be a contributing factor to that little bit of a tail wag. Another contributing factor could be that simply your gyro is not very happy with the pulses from the motor. Internal combustion engines have pulses and sometimes these gyros, um, doesn't matter how much insulation they put into these devices, they're still going to pick some of that engine noise. You know, if your engine is too rich or too lean, it's not tuned properly, it's going to maybe aggravate that tendency. But regardless, they all have it. And you know, what I, what I, when I said before that some of them didn't do it, well, you know, quite simple. It, it's kind of unpredictable. If I crash this later today and I have to rebuild it, it might not do it after the rebuild. But, you know, the bottom line here is, is that really there's no reason to troubleshoot this. This is something that you kind of have to just live with. It's not a big deal. Like I said, most of them do it. And, you know, as long as it's just very little, it looks like the tail is just not totally planted, 100% smooth. It looks like it's just barely, barely moving. Don't even worry about it unless you're an F3C FAI pilot that really, really want to be anal about your stuff. I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, it's just the nature of nitro. They all do it. I get this question all the time. Just fly it. You know what I tell people? Just don't hover tail in. Just fly around. You'll never see it. Um, when you see this in electrics, there's other reasons for electrics to, to, to have this problem a lot of the times is speed controller induced similar scenario where you know your your gyro your flabberless system where your tail gyro will pick up some of the noise uh, that is generated by the speed controller um, again same deal not a big deal sometimes it's a little bit of a slower oscillation you know one of my goblins has it I have a castle 160 in it and you can barely see a very very slow kind of tail oscillation it's not a fast hunt or anything like that again Nothing that you have to do about it. Just live with it. Fly it. Don't look at the tail. Number three. All right, number three. This is actually a good one. I've seen a lot of people with this problem. They don't know how to fix it. Um, blade flutter in flight. Do you know what blade flutter sounds like? Huh, I don't know. Let's see if we can make this thing do it. Basically, you're flying around and your blades sound dirty. That's how I call it. It's just a dirty sound. It's not crisp. The best way to see it is on a roll, just a simple roll. Whether you're traveling forward or backwards or stationary rolls, they're just not going to sound clean. Trust me, they're going to sound dirty. Like, they're just not biting the air. It's not a crisp blade noise. Let's see if this one does it. Motor is very rich. Sounds pretty dirty, doesn't it? It's not a it's not a crisp clean blade noise. You know, when you roll your helicopter, you know, the helicopter should sound crisp, clean. Um, it shouldn't have any weird, like, lasting sound. It should be like a very, very crisp. So, first thing that you're going to check is your uh, tracking. That's obvious. But, you know, if your helicopter's been tracking all along, and then all of a sudden it starts doing that, then you know there's something else going on. I'm going to talk about those other factors here. First thing you check your tracking. My blades were out of track, so I'm going to fix my tracking. Hopefully that'll take care of the problem on this particular case scenario. But there is a lot of other contributing factors and we're going to talk about those. Now I'm going to show you how the blade should sound actually. Now you hear like blade noise, like, but you don't hear that raspy You don't hear that raspiness at the end of the roll. So in my case, it was the tracking. Now, what else could be causing that? There's a lot of different things. The first thing that I recommend people to do is to check their uh, spindle. Now, if you know your spindle's not bent, uh, without any shadow of a doubt, then of course it's not your spindle. And we're gonna talk about the other things. But check the spindle first. Make sure the spindle's not bent. How can you check the spindle? First of all, 
once you track your blades, if you're flying right set up, you're in a hover and you're tracking your blades, then the blades should be perfectly in track, not only right set up, but, but upside down as well. If the blades go out of track when you go upside down, it means you have a bent spindle, 90% of the time. Another way that you can check for spindle is you basically remove your blades, or actually one blade. I'm gonna remove this blade real quick. You take your wrench and you basically, what you do is you turn the bolt and when you turn one of the bolts it'll turn the spindle it'll turn everything you stare at the other blade grip in fact it's a very good idea to leave your other blade in because if the blade grip starts to move around you're gonna notice it more through the blade hold the head real tight and just start moving the bolt and that blade should not move anywhere as you can see this one's not moving if that spindle was bent that blade would actually move quite a bit so check the spindle replace it if necessary the most common cause of that blade dirty noise whatever you want to call it flutter is usually thrust bearings um, make sure your thrust bearings are not in backwards I've seen people do that so you know you have your small ID and your big ID small ID always has to go to the outside big ID almost always to the inside um, align helicopters. Um, the thrust bearings are not very high quality. They don't last very long. When I used to fly T-Rex 700s, every 100 flights I had to change them. If I didn't, I get the dreaded blade flutter. So make sure that your thrust bearings are okay. Finally, your dampeners. If they get pretty worn out, you might have that problem, but generally that usually doesn't usually doesn't cost it. The most common cost is the thrust bearings. So check your thrust bearings. Make sure you have um, uh, how do you call it, uh, grease and the thrust bearings. And finally, um, one more thing that can cause it, and this could drive you crazy, it's driven me crazy before. Um, on the Velocity, for example, it's not as notorious, but on the older Align models, here, there's an Align right here. I remember having that problem with flutter and weird blade noise, and it turned out to be one of these balls being loose from the blade grip. It only has to be loose, not all the way, obviously. We're talking to the point where it's just not completely tight and it has like 0.1 of a millimeter of slop. That'll make your blades go in and out of track and it'll flutter. It could be the ball right here too. And in flop or helicopters, it could be anything that connects your swash to your blade grip. Also, it could be a bent arm, like especially on the flab or on the flab or helicopter, you could have a bent arm, you could have a bent blade grip, you can have one of these bent. Anything that changes the pitch of one bl blade with respect to the other will cause a blade flutter. So that's it for blade flutter. We're gonna move on to number two. And number two, my tail blows out. Well, we see this a lot. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it, but I'm gonna demonstrate what it means by my tail blowing out. So there's a few different things that it can be. Um, I've seen some people have their tail blow out. When they punch it, the tail kind of tweaks like that. Kind of like that, okay? So that's the first way my tail will blow out. And the second is, let's say, uh, uh, maybe we'll go backwards and from forward it'll kind of whip around into forward, you know? Or, uh, you know, we can show that again. So come backwards and it won't hold and it'll, it'll want to spin. Another way that I always check for the tail blowing out, it's like a nice sideways loop, like this. Sideways is the hardest on any gyro. So if I can put my helicopter sideways, so I'll come here and come full speed sideways, it's rock solid. But if the tail wants to blow out, we got some tricks for you. So let's discuss why the tail blows out. So as we demonstrated, there's really two main ways that your tail will blow out. In a, in a uh, full punch out with, your, with a lot of collective and while flying. So let's talk about the punch out first. Lots of times I've seen it where if guys are just punching out and the tail's kicking out, you have too much pitch. Um, either you were too lazy to put a pitch gauge on or just didn't feel like doing it. Um, so you could have too much pitch in there which is going to cause your tail, it just won't be able to keep up. So lower your pitch. We're recommending, back in the day we used to run like 14 degrees pitch. That's kind of, I, I think 12, you know, something like that is, uh, is pretty good for, for pitch. So besides the pitch being too great, uh, other times, especially in the smaller guys, some things can slow 
slip, like the pulley can slip on the tail shaft, um, your belt can slip if you have a tail belt, um, various things like that, so mechanical slip can happen. Another thing that can happen is your gain can be too low. So make sure your gain's kind of in the right. You want to back it up. You want to increase your gain till it wags in a turn. Turn it down from there so you're done. So another thing that it could be is um, tracking your tail in normal mode. So um, we showed this in a few different uh, episodes, like our setup video number three. I have a switch where when I flick the switch, my gyro goes from head holding, so you can see it's head holding, it stays wherever I last put it, to normal. Right there is a normal mode, so that's a rate mode. So what we do is we hover it, we flick it into rate mode, and we see where the helicopter's going. I know Futaba really recommends this. Um, on V-Bar, the guys don't seem to do it as much, but anything Futaba, I'm not sure if B Beast X is doing it or not, but 611, 401, CGY 750, um, I'd recommend wherever you can get something in rate mode, that's gonna be the neutral point, and it's usually offset to the right, you can see right there, that's my neutral point. If you look straight down, uh, it's about a seven degree offset to the right. So tracking your tail will certainly help that. Another thing that can cause your tail to blow out is simply a low tail gear ratio. Um, some helicopters just have an inherently low tail gear ratio, meaning if your helicopter, uh, for every one revolution of your main rotor, your tail spins usually about four times, four to four and a half to five times uh, per every rotation. So um, this helicopter here is about 4.6 something to one. Um, that's where I like to see them in the 50s to the 90s. I think that they're good. Um, some helicopters like the new T-Rex 600E, they geared their tail. It's like 4 very it's like 4.0 to 1 or something. I don't know what it is. But they geared it so that when you run a 2400 head speed or something ridiculous that your tail isn't spinning too fast. Well, that's kind of too high. So, if you're running a model that has a very low gear ratio, simply um low head speed. And if, if you're running that with, with a, uh, a low gear ratio and a low head speed, number one, you can bump your head speed up, but you might sacrifice it. Sometimes you might not like how it flies at that point. Another thing to simply do, just put longer tail blades on. I wasn't, I thought that the, when I flew my T-Rex 700 for about a year, I thought the gear ratio was, the nitro, I thought the tail gear ratio was just slightly too slow for like a 1950 head speed. So I used to run 115s on my tail and it completely went away, the tail blades. So that was definitely a great thing to take a look at. Um, so that's pretty much it for your tail blowing out. Um, just take a look at everything. Once again, pitch, uh, gyro gain, um, track it in rate mode, and uh, your longer tail blades will certainly help with that. So keep those tails straight, ladies and gentlemen. And lastly, we've come down to number one. Now this isn't number one because it's the most fantastic thing out there, but we're finding it's the number one uh, most pain in the neck problem to solve. And Bert and I have seen just traveling throughout the world and flying at events everywhere. We're finding that uh, this is the number one hardest problem to diagnose. But now that we know it, this is the first thing I look at every time. So see if you can take a guess. So let's say if we're flying here and you have a tail shake, and you've checked everything. You've checked everything that we said last time. You know, flying around, things are cool or whatever. You, you've checked, you've checked your, uh, your tail blowing out, you know, all, all that sort of thing. Everything's cool. But let's say if I fly, especially in like a, a sort of funnel, and you see a shake kind of like that. Kind of a shake. And you've lowered your gain and stuff, but you're just getting this weird sort of wobble, just like that. But then when I stop, it's fine. You've lowered your gain, you've checked all your shafts, you've checked everything, and you just can't figure out what the problem is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me say what the problem is. We took this out just to show you. A loose boom support. Are you freaking kidding me? It'll do that? Yeah, I've had motors run lean because of a loose boom support. I swear to God, some models show it. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I, probably because you've got such a big mass out here um, that's unsupported spinning its ass off back here. You need your boom supports to make sure that everything is supported back here. Um, now, when we, when, we, when we talk about um, loose boom supports, we're talking about either the bolts up front 
can be loose. So I always, 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 on every helicopter I got, I green or red Loctite these, always. I just don't want them coming loose. Second of all is the um, carbon coming loose in the plastic. So here, here I've used, I've used CA on these. Um, Align, for instance, they come pre-glued and pre-pinned, but after a while they wear out and they get loose. So you have to take the little screws out with a 0.9 millimeter wrench, JB weld it, CA it, or epoxy it, and put it back together. I recommend, usually plastic to carbon, I recommend, Bert and I recommend JB welds pretty good, JB quick. CA works, but yeah, it seems to come off. Uh, anything metal to carbon, we really recommend um, JB weld on that, because that's gonna work the best. Um, it can't, it doesn't have to be a loose screw. Um, I had it, for instance, we came back from Vegas and uh, TSA kindly cracked my um, carbon right here, the, the boom support itself, and I saw that tail waggle. And I just couldn't figure it out for the life of me. So the first thing I took, took a look at, anytime it's a tail shake, even before the high gain, even before uh, running longer tail blades and stuff, I always look at the boom supports here. Your clamp could be loose, anything, so. That's it. Now that you know that, now you won't allow a loose boom support to ruin your day. So this was actually pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I know different. that there's like so many other things that we we could do like a top 50, mm -hmm. but we would need like two weeks to shoot it. Yeah, that's and true. it wouldn't be three or four bucks. It'd be eighty nine dollars. Eighty nine dollars. But um, I thought some of these were useful. I mean, I know that the boom support thing is awesome. Oh. Uh, back in the what day, I pain. just struggled with that. What like, pain. years ago, yeah. Boom now supports come loose, and yeah, yeah. I just go straight to that. It's bad. Um, there you, you know, go. The flabberless drift. I know people running into issues with that. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of useful tips. So I yeah. thought you guys enjoyed it. Yep. Um, Maybe one of these tips will save something and make your purchase and download worthwhile. Yep. And exactly. We'll see you in the month of April. Yes. Number 24. What is that one going to be on? I don't know. But we have a lot of plans going on. We do have a lot uh, of plans. We might go to 3D Masters again. The most of And maybe Ooh. compete again. Oh. We need to start working on something right We are now. reigning champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it that way. That'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you right, guys thanks. are champions too, by the way. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Thanks Appreciate for watching. it. Yep, see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sure. No. Here, look it up on the phone. I'm recording. What Don't episode move. is this? Robots. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably mine. Let's see. We'll pop it off. Oh crap! Edit that. <laughs> All right, hey, come here, please. Plug it with this. Plug it with that. Oh, never mind. We're good. Never mind. Dude, what happened? Why are you all pissed off? It fell off the table. When I was filming number ten. This is what happens when you do smack talk. This is this is the sacrifices we do for the viewing audience. It broke. I'm so sad. I don't know any of them. They're, they're very loud. They're very loud. No, because we are running a uh, enterprise in a public facility, so we can't we can't tell them what to do. <laughs> Let me see if it does it. Come on! So if you were watching it where Bert was here talking about that, and then you see the camera go, Duh! freaking thing, I hit my head on it. It's the perfect height. Sucks. Number two, number two, number tail, two. Tail okay, tail my tail blows out. Okay. Take one. Take one, here we go. Action. And it's really hard to change. Troubleshooting tip number, number something. You're yeah. thirsty. Yeah. Grab a beverage. It's, it's a <laughs> but it, it's gonna get better. It's My boom support is loose. Oh, here, cut it. What? What? Cut, 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 it, cut. cut we it. start over. No, what? Um, the number one, hard to find, yada, yada. No, but we're gonna put number one up there. Yeah, yeah, but don't say my boom support's loose. Just oh. say, just say, you you have this problem and you show it what it's doing. Yeah. And you've checked your gain, you checked yep. everything I told you to yeah, check that's already. Fine. That's then fine. you land. Right. And then we'll walk up to it. Oh. You fucking ass. Fuck you. Ray, fuck you. Ray, Ray, Ray. Eat shit and fucking die. Ray, Ray. What? What's up? What's up? How you doing, Ray? How's life? Look at the cigarettes, the cigarettes, the cigarettes. How's life? Wonderful. We're filming. 
<laughs> Look at the cigarette. Look the at wing. the cigarette. The, wing. the wing's a perfect. <laughs> oh shit. The cigarette's a perfect wing holder. The other way around. What's up? Right, bye. Get the hell out of here. Get the fuck yeah. out. We're recording. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ray. I love you. When we get back there, we have to fight. <laughs> we'll do the right, 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 right. All right, so, all right. All right this is take yeah, two, yeah, take number, two num number one. Number oh, one. Fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit, he's gonna hit the Blake's gonna hit the car one. Oh, he's. Oh, oh, stop! Stop! stop. All right, we're gonna go we'll do the alternating right. We're gonna go get Chicken Wing because he said he had a. Uh, he said he had a troubleshooting tip. He has a troubleshooting so tip. We don't know <laughs> what the troubleshooting tip is all about. Right. So, right, 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 right. What's that for? My rags. You're Why? veering rags. Why? Ray, what is this? What are you doing? Oh, you broke it. What the hell? You broke it again? No goblin. <laughs> he gave up on flying. The motor came out. <laughs> the motor moved. You're afraid of that you're afraid of Oh, you crashed? I had inverted right, his right, 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 right. Bam! Right. 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 Where's the gobbles? Where's the goblin? Where's the gobblers? Where's the goblin? Right. Ray, why is your car so dirty? Ray, you only came here with the 450? Right. Are you sitting me? You only came here with the 450? Yeah. So? You and you. Shut the fuck up! Alright, Ray, let's go film this. Alright, let's do it. This is tip number fucking 69. It's, I got this from Pinion, my fucking little dog buddy. When you feel a little bound up, you need some good cup of coffee, and then you feel some gas pains coming on, you should always carry a rag with you. You never know when you're gonna need it. Well, guess what? Relief is on its way. <laughs> what happened? You ready? <laughs> that was Bobby, by the way, not me. <laughs> eat him up, eat him up. Do it, 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 do it. Do it. Eat him up, come. Do it, do it, do it. No, you haven't done it. You haven't done it yet. Do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs>